Welcome back, everybody. Let's just focus on the Hong Kong budget here. The financial secretary, Paul Chan, has defended his 2021-2022 budget, which will see the city post a record deficit of 257.6 billion Hong Kong dollars this year. Chan told CNBC the new measures will be enough to support the economy. Well, Emily has uh, spoken uh, with Paul Chan uh, with this uh, first on CNBC interview. And Emily, um, I'm hearing there's a lot of criticism and scepticism about this food voucher scheme, for example, which is going to cost the government, what, four and a half billion US dollars and will mean ultimately they hand out, what, 650 US dollars to every citizen that is eligible in Hong Kong. I mean, why, why are they doing this at a time when clearly the government's facing a deficit? Well, uh, Paul Chan is saying that he wants to boost consumption and this a digital voucher scheme that he's going to be announcing or going to be launching will benefit 7.2 million Hong Kong residents. Hong Kong has weathered two years of economic contraction and he has just unveiled a budget package together with the vaccination program which it kicked off today to help Hong Kong return to growth. He's forecasting Hong Kong GDP of three and a half to five and a half percent this year. Uh, but the $10.3 billion of sweeteners in the latest budget is is fewer but with more targeted relief measures. Uh, so I put this question to him whether the criticism that this was not help enough to help those in need and uh, what was his response to that. Here is Paul Chan, Hong Kong's financial secretary. We are going to have a record budget deficit year. I mean the 2020 uh, The budget deficit is forecast to be 256 billion. This is the background. And in the coming year, 21-22, uh, we are going to roll out support measures and with all these measures, we are going to have another budget deficit over a hundred billion dollars. It's a huge amount. And this amount has already taken into consideration the green bond issuance this year to the order of 35 billion and the right back of accrued interest from future fund of 25 billion. So as you can see, uh, I think perhaps uh, the current relief measures that we are going to roll out is to the best of our ability in these circumstances. You've introduced a three basis point increase to the stock trading stamp duty, which will generate additional government revenue. In doing so, you said now was not the appropriate time to adjust profit and salaries tax or introduce new taxes. So why was stock trading chosen? Well, our stock market has been performing very well. And over the years, we have launched a number of different initiatives to further enhance the competitiveness of our stock market. Um, for example, back in April 2018, we introduced a listing reform, allowing rated voting right, uh, allowing innovative companies with rated voting rights structures to be listed allowing biotech companies without revenue stream, without profit record to be leased, and also allowing uh, mainland companies listed overseas to come back to Hong Kong for secondary listing. So with all this initiative, we can see the Hong Kong market has been doing very well, very active. The volume uh, has gone up quite a bit. So perhaps this is the time for us to uh, increase a little bit on the stamp duty, which will not harm our competitiveness. And at the same time, we'll bring additional revenue to the government at this juncture. And we will continue to work very hard to further enhance uh, the International Financial Center status of Hong Kong, uh, including working on sustainable and green finance, uh, developing the fixed income market, and also promoting asset management, wealth management, family offices and insurance and risk management business. So we remain very confident on the prospect of Hong Kong as an IFC. I'm sure you noticed that the increase in the stamp duty resulted in a 900 point sell off on the Hang Seng Index. Shares in Hong Kong exchanges also took a beating, pulling back as much as 12 percent. The stock exchange operator said it had not been consulted on this increase. What do you say to those who believe that this was a bid to cool a market that has run up too high too fast? 
Well, as you may have noticed, the adjustment in the stock market is not just Hong Kong. Uh, markets in the region, including the one in Tokyo, in Korea, in Shanghai, all are going through downward adjustments uh, because of external factors and because of the uh, previous uh, escalation in the markets across the board. So uh, I would not be bothered by temporary fluctuations in the market. Uh, what we believe is that we, we continue to work hard to enhance the offerings of, of our market, to further enhance the competitiveness and attractiveness of the Hong Kong uh, uh, market. We will continue to attract info of international capital. Restarting travel will be key to sustaining economic recovery here in Hong Kong. And lately, there has been chatter about the restart of the Hong Kong-Singapore travel bubble. I put that question to him, whether or not we can expect a revised plan to be announced soon. Uh, Paul Chan saying that at this stage, they cannot give any definite date, but it is something that they are working hard to achieve. I asked him whether or not Singapore would be first. Uh, the answer was that they are in discussions with a number of countries about restarting travel, uh, and in particular, starting travel between mainland and Hong Kong is very important in terms of sustaining economic recovery. Also on the subject of HSBC and that Asia pivot uh, that we were hearing about uh, when they released their results earlier in the week, uh, I put the question to him whether or not uh, he had been in discussions about a relocation of HSBC headquarters back to Hong Kong and the notion that some senior executives are being relocated to the city here. He says HSBC is the case is obvious for this group because the majority has their income from this part of the world so having their management executives close to the market is just natural whether or not the headquarters will be here he says perhaps something for the group to consider so that's my interview with Paul Chan of course we'll be continuing to bring more of that conversation in a first on CNBC interview back to you guys excellent questioning there Emily I was listening to a lot of your questions thank you very much indeed for that